In this video, I want to create a UI text object that's going to display the names of all the objects that are in this list. So when we click on an object, it's not only going to get added to the list, but this UI text object is going to display the name of that object. We're also going to add the functionality so that we can turn the object off when we click on it. Just to give us a little bit more visual feedback. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is go into the flow graph of the clickable objects and make it so that when we click on the object, it turns itself off. I'm going to add in one unit. I'm going to right click and add in a unit. Game object, set active. And I'm going to connect the flow. And the object that I want to turn off is the self, which is already set up, but I can also drag this in. And we want the value to be false. We're going to set the game object to turn itself off. Let's give that a quick try make sure that's working. So now as I click on the objects, they'll turn themselves off. So the next thing we want to do is create a UI text element that will display all the names of the objects that have been turned off, or more specifically, all the objects that have been added to this list. So I'm going to go up to create, UI, text, and I'm just going to rename this object list. I'm going to go into my scene view, double click on my canvas to get a full view, and I'm going to click on the text object, and I'm going to go to the Rect Transform tool, stretch it out a little bit, I'm going to drag it up into this top corner here, and I'm going to make it fairly long like so. Just to make it easy, I'm going to scale the font up to about size 25, I'm going to center it, and I'm going to make the text white. I go back to the game view, we can see our list there in the top right corner. The next thing we need to do is add a flow machine to the text, and then create the flow graph that's going to display the names in this list. So I've added my flow machine, and next to my macros folder, I'm going to create a new bolt flow macro. I'm just going to call it display list. I'll go back to my text object and drag and drop that flow macro onto the flow machine. So there's a few things that we may be doing here that are new. We're going to be working with a string and what we're going to do is go through that list item by item, finding the name of that item and adding it to the string. So we're actually going to be adding to a string or uh, concatenating is a fancy word for saying adding to a string or adding two strings together. So that's what we're going to be doing. There are more efficient ways of doing it than what I'm going to do here, but really what I'm trying to demonstrate is the use of lists, not necessarily the most efficient way to update a UI element. So I'm going to right click on the flow graph and I'm going to right click again to add an update event. So first thing I'm going to do is add a new unit and we're going to set a variable. And in this case, I'm going to create a flow variable. This is just a variable that's only going to exist in this flow. It's not an object variable. It's not a scene variable. It's only going to exist in this flow. So I'm going to connect that flow. I'm going to name the variable. And this is just going to be a list of names. So this is a, going to be a string variable. And it's just going to contain the names of all the objects that are on this list. Now to get started, I want to give it a value. So I'm going to add a unit. And I'm going to look for string literal. And when I initialize this variable, I want it to be blank. Every frame that it comes through here, I want to reset the value of this variable to be blank, to have nothing in it. That way, if we've added something to our list or removed something from our list, we're going to start from scratch and rebuild up the string or the list of names. Next, I'm going to drag out the flow and I'm going to search for a for each loop. And this is a super useful unit when we're working with lists. What this does is kind of what it says. It's going to go through each element or each item in that list, and it can run code using that element. So first thing we need to do is tell it which list we're going to loop through. So I'm going to right click, add unit, get variable. And in this case, I'm going to get a scene variable. In an earlier tutorial, we created this list of clicked items. And I'm going to drag that into the for each loop so it knows which list to iterate through. Now on the right hand side of this for each loop unit, we have four options. The exit, this is the flow that's going to happen once it's done looping through each item. The body flow, this is the code that's going to run for each item or each entry into that list. The index, this gives us the number of the item of the list. So it's important to know that lists and arrays start with zero. It's, so it's going to start with zero, one, two, and three. And this just gives us the number. So sometimes we want to be doing some work with that. In this case, we're going to create a list, a visual list of the names, and we're going to put the number in front of it. The item, this is the actual item that's in that list. So in this case, those are game objects that we've clicked on. So what we want to do here is go through each item in this list, get its name, and add it to this string, this list of name string. So the first thing we're going to add is a concatenation unit. I'm going to right click. I'm going to add string concat. And you can see there's a bunch of different options here. And I'm going to choose the option that lets us put in four arguments. So that's going to take four different strings and put them together into a single string. 
the first argument I'm gonna put in is the item number. And so this is gonna help us create a visual list and put the number of the item in front. Next, I'm gonna create a string literal, like so. And all I'm gonna create here is a period and a space. And then I'm gonna add that as my second argument. So what that's gonna create is a number with a period and then a space after it. The next thing I wanna add is the name of the item. So up here in my for each loop, I'm gonna drag that down. I'm gonna search for game object name and game object dot name get. And I'm gonna drag that in to my third argument. You can also see here, just like the list, we started with argument zero, one, two, and three. Same kind of numbering nomenclature as with lists and arrays. So the fourth argument in our concat unit is the command to add a new line to our string. And that takes a few steps in Bolt. So let's walk through how to do that. If I go up to tools, Bolt, unit options, wizard. So this first window that pops up is the assembly options. This is where we can add another assembly or another library. And we don't need to do that. So scroll to the bottom, press next, then scroll to the bottom of the type options. Here we need to hit the plus, And then we need to search for environment and that's the one we need to add in. This is gonna allow us to add a new line command. So press generate, and this will take a few minutes as Bolt rebuilds the units and adds in these new units. Now that Bolt has rebuilt the unit options, we can right click, add unit, and I can search for new line, and I get environment.newline, organize that a little, and connect that up to our fourth argument. Next thing we need to do is we need to update the current list of names. So I'm gonna right click, add unit, get variable, and we're gonna get flow variable, list of names. We're gonna drag the output of that up to an add statement. And in this case, we want the add generic. And we're gonna take the output of the concat unit and add it as the second input to the add. We're gonna take the output of our add unit and that's gonna be the new value for our variable. So I'm gonna search for set variable, flow variable, list of names. And then I'm gonna connect this up to the flow coming out of the body option. So this is gonna get done for each item in the loop. So once this is all done, once we've built up this string with all the different names of the items in our list, we need to update our text element. So that's gonna happen with the flow that comes out of this exit option. So I'm gonna drag that up and search for text, text, set. So this is setting the value of the text in the UGUI text element. And we wanna set that to our list of names. So I'm gonna right click, add unit, get flow variable, and choose my list of names and connect that up to the value of our text. Let's push play and see if this works. So you can see that the text element has updated the value to an empty string. It's not displaying anything right now. When I click on a cube, the name of the cube is now displayed in the text element along with the index of that object, which starts at zero. If I click on a sphere, we get a one and so on and so forth. So there you go. We've used a for each loop to iterate through each item in a list and display the name of that item in a UGUI text object. In our next video, we're gonna look at creating buttons that will select either the first, last, random, or all of the items in this list and reactivate those game objects and remove them from the list. So I hope that was helpful. And I hope you'll join me for my next tutorial on using lists with Bolt.